Our last speaker is uh, William Silver. He's a postdoctoral fellow in the radiochemistry program. His mentors are Dr. Sun and Dr. Oz. And the title of his talk is Design, Radiosynthesis, and Evaluation of Radio Tracers for Positron Emission Tomography Imaging of Steroral CoA Desaturase 1, SCD1. All right, it worked. Um, so SCD1 is a key enzyme in this de novo fatty acid metabolism pathway. It converts saturated fatty acids into monounsaturated fatty acids by introducing a double bond at the C9 position. Now, it's becoming more known that this de novo fatty acid metabolic pathway is upregulated in tumors to help support that rapid proliferation of cancer cells. And kind of because of this, we're seeing a lot of targets in the enzymes of this pathway uh, for inhibition of the enzymes to target cancer therapy or for cancer therapy. And recently, actually, several reports have shown that inhibiting SCD1 with small molecule inhibitors uh, have shown that there's, that slows tumor growth in vivo and also uh, in vitro. One of the uh, other interesting aspects, I think, of SCD1 is that its expression is correlated with prognosis. Uh, so the higher the expression, the poorer the, the poorer the prognosis. And this was specifically shown in breast cancer patients. And as well in the hepatocellular carcinoma, uh, it's also been shown that SCD1 inverse, is inver inversely proportional with the differentiation. <laughs> So kind of my goal for this project was to develop a imaging modality to non-invasively uh, image SCD1 uh, quantitatively. And I chose positron emission tomography because it can provide that sensitivity to small changes in SCD1 expression. And I think where this would kind of gear towards in the future would be applications in guiding therapy of different cancers as well as provide some prognostic in pre and post uh, therapy. Now there's been dozens of inhibitors uh, for SCD1 that have been published and a lot of these have sub-micromolar range IC50s. So it really came down to choosing which one that I can alter and not significantly change its binding affinity for SCD1. And for that I ended up choosing this pyrazine and that was because this tail group can be altered here without drastically altering its affinity. And you can see that it ranges from about 12 to 25 nanomolars, or 83 nanomolars. And the two that I went with were essentially these two down here. Now, I finally was able to develop and synthesize and radio label two different compounds, one of which contains this fluoropropylamine, and the other one is a fluoroaniline. The first one I call FPPPT, and the other one is FAPPT. And now both of these contain the PET nuclide fluorine 18, which is a very common nuclide when it comes to PET imaging. Now, of course, this aromatic amine in the FAPPT is difficult to conjugate to, so it's going to provide a lower yield, which we clearly saw, or which I clearly saw when I did the radio labeling. And I was only able to get about a 3% radiochemical yield, whereas for the FPPPT, it's a fluoropropylamine. Uh, it's very easy to conjugate, and I was able to get a 21% radiochemical yield. This slide's a little more difficult to describe, so uh, I'll bear with me here. What I needed to do was I needed to show that these inhibitors can indeed inhibit SCD1 selectively. And that was really only to get preliminary data from the FPPPT, and that was with the F19 analog. Uh, what I did was I incubated the inhibitor itself at a high concentration, 10 micromolar, with SCD1 positive cells, which is H460. Uh, I ended up using those. Now, what, I, what we did is we put in this universally labeled carbon-13 glucose as the only glucose source. And then this is metabolized into the 2-carbon acetate, or acetyl-CoA, and then that is further metabolized into lipids. Uh, we use gas chromatography mass spec 
to look at the oleate production. And as you can see that the carbon-13 from acetyl-CoA is incorporated into oleate based on the blue, which is DMSO as a control. And then when you add in the inhibitor, you can see that it's drastically decreased the amount of oleate. Now, oleate is the product of this SED1 reaction. And it was, this was about a four-fold decrease in product. So we were at least seeing some inhibition, so there is some selective binding to uh, SED1. Uh, next, I wanted to show that both radio tracers are being retained in cancer cells through SED1 mediated interactions. Uh, now, what I did was I had two different cell lines, C42, which is positive for SED1, and then MDA, MB231, which is negative for SED1. And I incubated these cell lines with a low activity of the radio tracer, washed it, and then incubated it in fresh media to let the radio tracer just uh, diffuse back out to the media that was not selectively bound to SED1. What I was able to see is that there was a difference in between C42 and the SED1 negative cell line. It wasn't a large difference, but it was a 2.2 and a 1.8 fold difference between a positive and a negative. So that's sort of reasonable, not excellent. I want to show that this is indeed SED1 mediated retention. So I repeated this in the C42 cells by co incubating uh, with a commercially available SED1 inhibitor. <coughs> when I did that, the reduction, or there was a reduction in retention seen um, in, both, in both radio tracers by about 40 and 39%. So fairly equal reduction in uh, retention. Since both radio tracers behaved fairly similarly in in vitro, I really just chose to go with the FPPPT because it was easier to synthesize and easier to purify. Um, I next wanted to wanted to show that we could differentiate between high and low expressing uh, tumors in a mouse xenograft model, and I use PC3 because it, it's easy to, easy to grow tumors. It has high SED1. And I again use this MDA MB231 as my negative control. And so I in injected intravenously the FPPPT, FA the F18 analog, and imaged the mouse one hour later. And then you can clearly see on this picture on the tumors, which is denoted by the white arrows, that there's a difference in uptake. So we were able to get some contrast between a positive and a negative tumor. Now, we did some ex vivo uh, biodistribution. You can see that the radio tracer kind of goes everywhere. Uh, it's mostly taken up into the urine, which is not here, or which is not shown, but I just have the major organs. One thing that you can see, though, is that a lot of activity is taken up into the bone matrix. Uh, so this is possibly due to defluorination, uh, which is clearly not something that we want to happen. But it's not. Uh, too drastic of an effect because we're still seeing that increase in retention in the SED1 positive cell line. So for some of the conclusions, we were able to synthesize and produce a sort of a proof of, proof of concept study um, where we synthesized this radio tracer for imaging SED1 or quantifying SED1 in, in vivo. Um, I ended up synthesizing two radio tracers. We did evaluate one of them in vivo, and we were able to show that both radio tracers have just moderate in vitro characteristics, and we definitely need to generate a second one that's a little bit more stable and has higher, higher binding affinity. That's it. Are there any questions for William? Raython. Yep. Uh, great talk. Um, so. What do you think contributing the mild uptake, why, why this is not affinity is not great in the tumor that you are showing in a CD positive in a xenograft? I don't know, to be honest. I think it's just not a very high binding affinity for SCD1, the radio tracer itself, for the inhibitor itself doesn't have a high binding affinity so to the enzyme. What, what are you thinking of doing the next step to increase that? I'd probably go with a different class of inhibitors, most likely. That's kind of where I was headed next. Okay. Any other questions? If not, please join me in thanking all of our speakers and the second question.